What is up, everybody? I am Kevin Ioli. A lot of heavyweight fights on Saturday, of course. The big, right? Well, I should say Friday and Saturday, right? Because I got the wrong day. The big star, of course, was uh, was Daniel Dubois, who won the uh, IBF or retained the IBF heavyweight championship. But I'll tell you what, there was a, a rising star on display in Glendale, Arizona, on Friday on ESPN. That is my guest right now, the great Richard Torres Jr. Richard is now eleven and zero, although that knockout streak, Richard, is ended. With a yeah. disqualification victory over Joey Duwaco, welcome. Uh, how did you feel like you performed in that fight? You no, know, I felt good. I um, I was really trying to tell everybody that you know I, I feel like this fight was going to be able to allow me to show off some of my other abilities. Uh, a lot of times, like people say, I blow through guys or I, I kind of just maul them or something like that. And uh, I understand that, but it, it's hard because if I have a guy hurt, I'm going to take him out. But I knew Joey. He was a um, he was a veteran fighter and he was a dangerous fighter, even if he was hurt. Uh, and so I was able to box more and and uh, and think a little bit more, and I think it showed. I thought that was a good opponent for you going into the fight, but I have to say I was disappointed, and I want to ask you this. You know, he gets disqualified for excessive spitting out of the mouthpiece, right? And here's a tough guy that talked big before the fight, and then all of a sudden you're spitting out the mouthpiece. That's basically saying, I don't want to continue. What did you make of that? Like, and Did you realize he was actually spitting it out, or did you think you were knocking it out? You know, the first time, I, I thought I knocked it out, and I think I did, but I think that might have gave him a little bit of a, uh, um, an idea. Uh, after the fight, though, what uh, we were talking, and he's like, dude, he goes, it wasn't me spinning out the mouthpiece. He goes, I have just been, never been hit with uppercuts like that before. He goes, you were able to hit me with those uppercuts. I didn't see him coming, and it just it knocked my mouthpiece out every time. And so I, I kind of agree with that. You know, he, he did, he was talking, uh, like, after the fight, he goes, dude, I'm, I'm a fighter, man. He goes, I wasn't trying to, like, I wasn't trying to get a DQ you know, it just it just kind of fell out every time. And so I'm not I, I don't know, you know, like it was a, a pretty excessive amount uh, as a veteran fighter. I feel like you should be able to bite down a little harder, too. But right. um, I mean, I, mean I, I do understand when those uppercuts come, you don't see them. It, it's kind of it's, uh, it's surprising. You know what surprised me when I saw the mouthpiece? It was one of those small that just covers the upper teeth. It was like I would buy at the drugstore, not right. what a professional fighter would use. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, man. You know, I, I luckily I have two custom mouthpieces that that I got, um, and so I, I use them. And I can't take my mouth even if I wanted to. I need someone else to help, you know, especially without gloves on. So uh, um, I don't know if he needs a guy. I, I know a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, of course, is the uh, 2020 Olympic silver medalist. Uh, he is the heavyweight. Uh, the heavyweight division is hot right now. Turkey Alashik has got a lot of the big guys uh, fighting each other. So I know your goal now would be Usyk and Dubois at some point down the road, right? They're the guys that have the belt, so that's kind of where you're going. So what did you think of Daniel Dubois' performance uh, against AJ? I thought it was a stellar performance, you know, the ability for him to, to get inside and, uh, and you know, take up that space and get in the distance. And then even when he was hurt to throw that check hook, uh, it was beautiful, you know. I think it shows headway fights, man. You know, people always talk about, oh, you can take a punch, you can't take a punch, this or that. It's just one shot. All right, so you were, I'm sorry, we had a, a little break in there, but uh, Richard was saying that uh, um, he was talking about Dubois and, and the heavyweights, and people talked, I, I wrote about chins, right? I wrote about, I said, hey, I thought there were going to be a lot of knock-ons in that fight because neither Daniel or AJ had the greatest chin, but uh, you were explaining maybe it's not just bad chins. Yeah, I mean, I think in those in those big heavyweight divisions, and and when you get guys like everyone has pop, you know, and it like uh, it only takes like ten pounds of force to to knock out a to to make that head rock, you know, and I think that it's it's not so much about if you have a chin or not, it's about if you can see that punch. And when Joshua got hit, he didn't see that shot coming because he had hurt Dubois, and he just kind of came in all offense, and uh, and and it just reminds you that even if you have your guy hurt, you gotta you gotta be defensively responsible. When you've been hit and hurt in a fight, how do you respond? Like, I mean, do you hold on? Do you fight back? Like, what, you know, you, you want to let your head clear, right, of course. But, like, what has been your natural response when guys buzz you? Did you get that? I mean, it, it depends on the situation, you know. I mean, if, if I'm wobbled, uh, I, have, I have no problem holding on. Uh, I have no problem. Uh, you, what you don't want to do, you just want you don't want to just cover up and try to hold still. You want to be able to move. So if I can move, I'm gonna move out of there. Uh, and then my dad taught me at a young age that if you're in that corner and you get hit and you have nowhere else to go, you just gotta bite down on that mouthpiece and punch. So I, I feel there's a couple of different things you could do. Uh, but um, 
I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm no stranger to being hurt in the ring before. I mean, I have been hit with some by some big guys, uh, and so I understand that like you can't fight, you can't swing with everybody. But, um, but I think my first initial reaction would be to, to, to get out of there. Right. Now, I want to ask you about your situation. Like going into this fight, I mean, this was obviously an important fight for you in developmental stage. You know, you're, you're trying to move up the ladder right there. But do you let yourself look at the top of the division and the guys in the top 10 and think, okay, how do I match up? And are you comparing yourself to them now? Or are you just doing your thing? It's hard because I'll see the guys in the division and I want to compare myself. Um, but one thing I've learned, like, or I'm still trying to learn in the heavyweight division or just kind of in, in life in general is I can't compare myself to the people next to me today. I can only compare myself to who I was yesterday. And so that's what I'm really trying to do. I'm really trying to say, hey, for my last fight, I've, I've grown. Uh, I've showed more of my ability. And I just want to get better from who I was yesterday. Uh, with that being said, though, I, I look at the guys. You know, I really want to be able to, to get in the ring yeah, uh, and, and just and show what I got. You know, I feel like a lot of people kind of underestimate me because of how I act and, and who I am. Um, right. But I'm, I'm an Olympic silver medalist, man. You know, I've been boxing since the first time I got in the ring, I was four. Uh, I was I was team captain USA boxing when I was only 19 years old, the youngest age you could do it. I I mean I've I've had some good accolades in the in the amateurs and I'm I'm undefeated in the pros. I've never had the final bell. Uh, I, I and to people that don't believe in me or to people that do believe in me, just just please continue to watch because like I I'm I'm confident in my ability with who I am today and I'm ready to to face just about anybody. How old does it get for you when you hear, you know, the one thing when people mention you in heavyweight contender, they mention your size, right? And people talk about the Bridger weight division. Now, if, if I think if I ran into a six foot two, 235, 240 pound guy who was mad at me on the street, I would not say that guy was small, right? Uh, but but you know, a lot of people would say Richard Torres is too small to be heavyweight champion of the world. Does it get old hearing that? And what is your response to it? Uh, yeah, it's 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 tough, you know, because I've always got that uh, growing up. It's been like, oh, Richard, you're too tiny. Richard, you're this, you're that. You're... And so what I got to say to them is just just watch. And uh, one of the big things, too, is like one of the biggest champs right now is Usyk. You know, he was uh, he was only, I think, 6'3 or 6'4. He's also only about 225. Um, and he was able to, to hang his hand in the ring with all of them. He beat Dubois. He beat Joshua. He beat Tyson Fury. He beat all the huge names. You know, so the little guys, you can't count them out because one thing I feel like us little guys have that the bigger guys don't is conditioning. Conditioning, right. being able to move on their feet, right. the agility. Uh, right. There's a lot of things that we bring to the table, too, that those super, super heavyweights don't. And uh, and I know it's, it's worked really well in, uh, in Ukraine, and I want to show what the United States can do with that, too. Yeah, Eddie Futch, in my opinion, was the greatest trainer who ever lived and had so many great champions, Joe Frazier and Riddick Bowe in the heavyweight division, among among many others. And, and he always told me, he says, anybody over 200 pounds can punch, right? So it doesn't matter who it is. But he said, what separates usually the, the best guys is the guys who can box a little bit, right? And, and that right. seems to be something like that, even though, you know, people might think of you as a knockout puncher. But I think, do you feel like you're underrated in terms of your ability to box and set things up and create? I, I don't know if I'm underrated, but I'm under. I feel like I've undershowed what I can do. If that makes sense, you know, I, I haven't been able to 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 box a lot of these guys that that I have. And I think Joey Joey was a guy that I was able to box a little more, and people were like, "Oh wow, this guy actually knows what he's doing." Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, and I, I always bring it back to the amateurs, man. I I've had over 155 fights. I've had over 160 fights as an amateur. I um. I mean, and so you fight the big guys, you fight the little guys, you have to box, you have to come forward. There's a, a lot of different styles that I can emulate and, and do in order to win, and uh, and I can adapt and conquer, you know what I mean? So I, I'm I'm really confident in my boxing abilities, uh, and I, I'm glad that I'll start being able to show it more. What about fighting Joey? Like, because the one thing about a guy like him, you know, so broad like that, I imagine, how do you set your angle up, right? Because, you know, he's very wide, right? And, and when you're trying to, you know, kind of get your angles and do it, it, isn't it difficult when the body is a lot bigger than what, what you're normally used to? Yeah, a little bit, you know, but uh, his, his feet weren't too quick, if that makes sense. You know, he was a big body and he had some great head movement, but his feet kind of stayed stationary for the most part. So I knew that, like if I could let, if I could establish my distance, um, that was all I needed. 
you know, because he, he had a shorter reach than me, and uh, he just wanted to loop in with one shot. And so if I could be able to get in, get out, and my dad and I were talking about just annoy him, you know, just 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 touch him. You don't have to swing with them. I don't hook with a hooker. Um, I, I was just going to get in there. I was going to annoy him, and I was just going to bust him up little by little. And like you were saying, anyone over 200 pounds can punch. All you got to do is put a glove to face. You know, you put a glove to face, it's going to bust the guy up. Right. So what, what's next? When are you going to be back in the ring? And, and, and what is the progression like in terms of your opponents? Like, uh, do you feel like you're ready to take a, a, another step up in terms of quality of opponents? No, I, I hope so. Uh, I, I'm, but at the end of the day, like, I follow what t uh, Top Rank tells me to do. I sign with them for a reason. Uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer in their matchmaking ability, and, uh, and I love what they do. I think they've been moving me right, and I want to continue just following the process. Uh, but I think I'll, I'll be back in. I'm, I'm really trying to get another fight in before the end of the year. Um, and so hopefully before then, I like staying active. And, uh, and yeah. Your Brandon Moore fight was, you know, I didn't talk to you after that fight, but the Brandon Moore fight was one I thought was impressive. You know, a young, you know, a, a prospect guy too, right, undefeated. Uh, you know, going into that fight, what was your, what was your thought process uh, about him? And did that tell you anything about where you are after you saw how that fight went? I was a little, I was a little more emotionally involved in the Brandon Moore fight because he was uh, talking a little bit before the fight uh, and he was uh, kind of showing off and, and just had a, a different demeanor than this last fight. Uh, but I, it wasn't like, it wasn't an enlightening moment for me, uh, beating Brandon Moore. I, I, I kind of expected to, to perform how, how I was performing. Um, I, uh, though I was happy I got the knockout. I wasn't expecting the knockout, um, because people say that he had a, he has a really great chin. I actually they say you could take a shot. And so, you know, um, but, uh, so being able to just kind of overwhelm him and, and I think he kind of fell to, um, to just because he wasn't, he wasn't conditioned enough. You know, I think he kind of fell out of tiredness and, uh, but being able to show that I, I mean, I could, I can make a young guy tired. I can make an old guy tired. If you get in the ring with me, you better be in shape because you will get tired. I want to ask you a little bit about outside the ring, right? Because obviously anybody that knows you, I talked to Bob Arum after the fight on Saturday night, and I said, what do you think of Richard? And Bob went on for like, I couldn't shut him up. I said, Bob, it's getting late on Friday night. Let's uh, let's go. He just raved about you and your family and the kind of character you had. But, it, but he talked about, and I thought this was accurate, you know, your personality, you're a fun guy, people gravitate towards you. And, you know, in your business, obviously, you, you're an athlete, and, you know, you become a star, you can make some money outside the ring, right? And I wonder, as a, as a heavyweight who has that ability to talk and, 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 and do other things, like, do you look at the potential, like, hey, not only can I make a ton of money as a boxer, but I can also become a big, you know, uh, endorser and, and can make, make some money without getting punched in the nose i mean i sure hope so you know i think that being able to uh have different areas of income is, is an amazing thing to, to have um but at the end of the day i am a boxer you know I, this is what i do for a living this is what i love to do uh so i'm not going to let any kind of like outside endeavors take away from my boxing ability and i think that's one thing I'm, I'm having to manage but i'm really thankful i have a great team by me i have advisors i have financial advisors i have uh like agents, I have people that really know how to manage my schedule and help me uh, do what I need to do. But um, I, it's, it's awesome, man. It's awesome being able to have people that, like, they'll, they'll, they'll know me from Instagram and not from boxing. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I just follow you because your Instagram page is funny. And I think that's really cool, too. Um, so I, I'm just happy to, to be in the position I am, I'm in. And uh, I think it's a testament to my family. You know, my dad and my mom, they, uh, they made me to the man I am today. And uh, I'm really thankful for that. I'm not so sure you weren't. I just saw your Instagram page, by the way. I wasn't sure you weren't going for a Capricorn uh, endorsement or something there. <laughs> yeah, maybe one, maybe one day. You know, those, those they're really good. That's my cheat day meal, man. <laughs> you gotta check that out. Hey, last thing um, they mentioned on the broadcast uh, Friday night, uh, they said you know that you would express concern seeing what happened to Jared Anderson. Um, I don't see a lot of similarities between you and he in terms of the career path, how things have gone. Right? You know, he got a lot of hype because of Tyson sparring with Tyson Fury, and Fury raved about him. But w can you express what your concern was when you saw Jared fight Bacoli and lose, and and how how it impacted you? You know, I feel like those might have been like words that I didn't say too much. Uh, the 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 only because. 
what I said is I don't think Jared out at all. You know, I think he has a, a perfect time to come back. What the question was that kept on being asked to me was, do I feel more pressure now that Jared has lost? And I do feel a little more pressure. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a concern, but I, I just see that, like, the fans that are mad that Jared lost are getting mad at me for not taking a bigger fight. But the fans that – and the fans that – were on my side to begin with are pushing me even harder. So I just feel like there's a little more eyes on me. Um, and and that's all I feel. I just feel a little more eyes. I don't necessarily feel concerned at, about it at all. I think that Jared's uh, Jared's my teammate, man. Uh, we were in the uh, Olympic Training Center. We lived there together. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Jared's. Um, and I, I, I'm rooting for him every time he gets steps in the ring. I was yelling my butt off when he was in that fight. I was at the, uh, the Riyadh fight. And, uh, and I wish him nothing but the best. But um, do I feel a little more pressure? I, I, I don't know if it's pressure, but I, see, I feel more eyes on me now. Understood. Let me add, let's just go back when you heard that he took that fight, right? Uh, I, I saw two things. There was one course of people that said, hey, I love the fact that Top Rank is being aggressive and pushing this guy to go up against, you know, obviously a very good veteran. Then there was these other group of people saying, Martin Bacoli is way too experienced for where Jared Anderson is right now. What was your thought? Were you surprised knowing Jared as you do and knowing his relative inexperience at, at the highest level that, that he, he was willing to take on somebody like Bacoli at that point in his career? Yeah, I wasn't surprised at all. Jared's a fighter, man. Jared, Jared wants to fight. Uh, he likes getting in there. He likes getting, getting, uh, getting in the action. I, I remember back at the Olympic Training Center, we were sparring partners, too. And uh, we'd get in some of those those fights, and we'd have other people that were sparring in other rings. They they'd all stop and just watch us spar, you know, because it was always fireworks, man. So uh, I, I'm 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 not surprised at all that Jared would take a uh, opportunity like that. Um, and I, uh, you know, if I, probably if I had the opportunity uh, asked to me, I'd probably do the same thing, you know. So yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not upset with it. Uh, he wants to see where he's at. He wants to be the best, and uh, and that's a true fighter, man. There's no doubt. That's a true fighter as well right there, Mr. Richard Torres Jr. He is uh, hopefully going to be back before the end of the year, 11-0 with 10 KOs. Richard, always good to see you, brother. Wish you the best. Thank you so much. Pleasure to talk with you as well. See you soon.